Say mama. That wasn't good. Mama. Wait, two syllables. Nope. Mama. That's two. Okay. We're gonna get into the deep when you do the that thing. We're gonna get there. So. Uh, th these are not good. These are getting worse. Come on now. You want to get back? You got to scream. I got to go. I got to go. This is kind of toxic. What's she doing? She's on top of the toilet. She? She's coming now out is the she door. Here? Nope, she's right here. All right. So are we going to do this or not? Okay, one more time. Okay, see, that's that what I wanted. Right. That's what I wanted this whole time. Thank you. She only gets about a fourth cup, and by a fourth cup, I mean I just eye out a couple pebbles in there. Daisy's on a diet. This will last her all week in here. <laughs> that's why I have a mason jar so that I can keep track of the portions. But anyways, um, what are we doing today? We're doing a workout. We're doing a full long, upper full body. body workout. We're doing a full body workout. Yeah. So this is called Miranda's full body workout. That was not supposed to be full body. But because her body is sore and she had surgery and her stamina is weak and then just got a massage and he scraped the out of my body with the scraper thing. And you felt sick on Tuesday so you had to miss that workout which yeah, threw off I your felt, whole week. Yeah, I felt like I kind of dove into this like I went from being at home and then like went like full blown back into being here and I was like. But you know one thing's for sure? What? You love the gym. Oh, <laughs> Gymshark told me so. <laughs> so Miranda, These are not my percent. word. These are not my word. This is Gymshark. So. That's Gymshark. Mm. Um, okay, so we're going to go do that. Um, so today... Oh, yeah, and we got to also... Oh, yeah, we got to take, take down the Christmas tree, guys. You think we can just... Um, can, we, can we, like... You know, like, with those videos where, like... like it, put it on a stand and then film the whole thing and fast yeah. forward through it? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, guys, we're going to go take down the Christmas tree. Ready? Go. <laughs> What's your favorite meal in your Megafit meals right now? My favorite meal or the meal I eat the most? Those are two different things. Okay, wait, both. What's the meal you eat the most and then your favorite meal? Um, I would say my favorite meal would have to probably be the steak stir fry. Okay. And because it kind of gives me like that hibachi feel. Yeah, I like the chicken stir fry, but yeah. And I would say the customized meal, the chicken and the rice, is what I eat the most right now. Oh, that's so pl I you uh, that's so plain. Well, it's it's just easier if I if I eat out or something, or if I want to have. This is actually like one of my favorite things to eat. The shit right here. I don't know. I didn't expect it to land right, but that shit right there is like one of my favorite things to eat, and it's a lot of fat. So. I'm gonna put it back now. Okay. Yeah. That was actually cool that it landed like that. It was cool. That was. <laughs> oh wait, we gotta put this away. It's the Christmas. I'll put that away. All right. So thankfully, they come. Uh, the meals come with ice, but it, it did disintegrate because I uh, this came yesterday. But um, we have changed up the meals. This is like what the fillet and rice looks like. 
frozen, obviously. And I like to keep, oh shit, gotta get a paper towel. The ice sometimes, like when it melts in there, I gotta push the ice back. Otherwise it gets, it like starts to, starts to leak a little bit. Yeah, sometimes, like I would say, I don't know, I don't know as of lately, I don't know if you agree with this or not too, but sometimes like I just don't want to eat this meal prep. And like I'll be like, all right, Uber Eats, what do we got? What are we, what are we working with today? And for some reason, sometimes like, the, the freshness of like a meal that like is not frozen rice makes me feel happy. So sometimes I'm like, all right, we are getting fresh kitchen. You know, like sometimes I'm like, I will literally fuck up a kale Caesar salad thing right now, and I don't care. That's really good. So, I try to give Lucas the meals that I'm not eating because, I don't know, lately I just, like, I, I wouldn't say that my diet, like, is the worst thing ever, because it's not. Like, I would say my, my diet not being insanely, insanely, insanely what it was years ago is more so me eating a fruit roll up having these egg white sandwiches things because they're a little bit more productive for me to eat when I'm busy because sometimes I forget to eat and then it's like 4 p.m. and I'm like, fuck, I haven't eaten yet today. Because I have it today. Um, so I, I try to sometimes to buy even like the waffles and stuff. The, the, this Vans brand, they have, um, they have these waffles and they have plant-based protein in the waffles and like that is, I would say, beneficial for me because I do kind of react poorly to the, uh, the whey protein. Uh, just because of my rosacea and stuff, so I try to avoid that. Like, you know, I try to, shit, I try to avoid that. Um, so I've been liking, I've been liking those, you know, for just a different type of food to eat. So sometimes when I'm bored, like at the grocery store, and I don't really know like what I want to eat, uh, sometimes I will actually. Hold on. Anyways. I find myself just buying foods lately that are easily toasted or, you know, in the microwave, you know, to make my life easier. What? I'll take it out. I'll do it. Oh, I was just going to put these in there. I got it. Okay. I'll do it. Thank you. So, I don't know. I just, I, I think everybody that, that, like, you know, it's not even about tracking macros. I think, like, we just kind of get sick of, like, what we've been doing or eating. And to be honest with you, I've, I have severely tracked, I mean, I still track my macros again. It's just a little bit different now, but... I have severely tracked my macros for like, how long would you say since I, when I had Nick as my coach? Um, how long did I start with that? Like 2017? Six, years. Six, seven years. Yeah, I told Lucas like when I had my first coach, I'm like, okay, I had this weird addiction to candy. I still do, but it's controlled now. And when I realized like it was more of a mental game than like, it was a, it was a stress thing for me. You know, like it was like, we were so stressed out in college. like. I look back in college and like, I thought my life was ending. Like I thought my life was so stressful and it really was, but I actually think that I, I projected my anger, you know, like with my parents' divorce and the things I went through as a child, I think I projected it to everything that I did. And I obviously wasn't aware of it because I didn't comprehend like when people would say, God, you know, you're so negative, you're so, like you're, um, you used to call me a pessimist actually when you first met me, remember that? Like we used to joke about it, but like you were serious. What was that, uh, that character? Dopey. Uh, dopey. dopey. You're Dopey the door. And what were you? Grumpy. Grumpy. You still are. Yeah. But anyways, <laughs> um, I feel like I'm happy now. Would you say I've transferred over? Sure. Really? Yeah. You evolved. So we need to get you to Dopey. <laughs> I'm just kidding, I'm just um, but yeah, I would say anyways, Smoke I just... Smoke some dopey. See? Fitting. Anyways. Um, I, I, try to, I try to shut up at the gym. I Sorry, just, I got distracted. This is like, I'm trying to be myself right now, you know? Alright. So, I think everything is, is perspective. And I know I just talked about three different things, but I don't care. Everything is perspective because... When we realize the choices that we make are, are more mental than they are anything else, and like when you can actually learn that. Sometimes I think people in life make decisions that are best for them. And I think people mistake that for not caring about their feelings. You know, because in life, you cannot live your everyday life 
you know, thinking about everybody's feelings all the time of how, you know, the action that is beneficial for you is going to, is going to affect someone else. You can't expect everybody to care, you know, more about your feelings than they do what works best for them or, or what is better for them. And it's a very interesting perspective to have because I think when we can have that and we practice that, we take our feelings, we remove them, and it allows us to actually look at the full situation for what it really is. Now, I'm not saying that you can't feel anything. I'm just kind of saying that when there's more logic and there's more data and there's more facts to a situation, there's less of like that hostility and like the less, less, less anger. And it's more so just kind of like a come to Jesus moment of like, you know what? I don't like that this happened. I don't like, you know, the way that this person treated me. You know, like for example, I, I remember my mom actually when she was here, she said, I find you to be so passionate, you know, with what you say, but you don't ever actually share sometimes like what actually happens to you. Yeah. You know, you know, so that being said, I have had things stolen from my apartment. I'm not going to go into that more, but in the midst of me sometimes going through things personally or at my home that I worked very hard to have in the midst of everything that, you know, that we have going on, when do I have time to, to care or, or to give that energy to distract me from what I have to be doing over here? And as much as I can say, gosh, I can't believe, you know, he did this or she did this or, you know, what have you, it happened. I have absolutely no control over it, right? And so it is what it is, but I'm also not going to allow other people's actions and projections and insecurities, I'm not going to allow them to take away my spirit. And I've learned that, you know, I actually like who I am. I like my, my, my childlike energy. I like the way that, you know, I'm not funny, but I am at the same time. I like the sarcastic way I do things. And I like the way that I, I can make fun of myself because I think it's, it's been humbling for me to be able to actually see me for what I really am. Because then, like, other people's words don't hurt me, you know? And that's an interesting concept, you know? People now, you know, might say, oh, you know, I find you still to be aggressive, but it's like, I will know where you are at on your own journey because if I'm just talking to you like this and my everything I say is real, let's just say, for example, and then you, you take me as being aggressive, no, you just misinterpret my passion and aggression. And that's not, like, those two things are not the same thing. And so I don't let people's words all the time hurt me because... You know, if I don't respect you, I'm probably not, I'm not, I'm not fully listening to the conversation because I find people that I don't respect to give me the most advice and the most feedback that isn't asked. And it's like, you guys, I, it's nice that you're talking to me right now, but you also don't even know what it's like to live a day in my shoes. You also don't know what it's like to have an insane amount of pressure and then want more and then want to be better and then challenging the best, challenging the norm. You know, I actually was, I posted something on my, the pattern app the other day. And I was trying to share a little bit about like what my astrology chart says and everything on there is pretty much accurate. And it talked about how I am in situations in life where people try to make me the problem, but you know, I'm not the problem. It's that people don't like that they can't control me. And this has happened a lot of times in business. This has happened, you know, with, with things in the past. And when I read that, I was like, you know what? I'm not saying that I don't do anything wrong or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not excusing sometimes me reacting off of my emotion because I, I have done that. You know, I'm not, I'm not innocent. So, you know, take that for what it is. But when I read that, you know, I, I, I think people get mad at how powerful I actually am and they get mad at my aura and my energy because they actually know that I am, I am truly meant for greatness. And I think for people that, that try to achieve greatness, see me... And they want to just like kind of knock me down a little bit. And it's like, for as many times as people do that to me, uh, Tim Grover said this in the speech that we were, that I was at the first time. And I absolutely humiliated myself. I hope I get that clip one day because that's really something. But anyways, he said something to me and it's kind of stuck with me this whole time. You know, he said, when you get knocked down, you know, stand up taller. And I'd say that's, that, that's, that's actually what I strive to do every day. Time for the gym. <laughs> it feels like we're running out of time. Let it go. If you want me to start, let me know. I am down and ready. I can't take it anymore.
there and not my heart. Oh, this is in sync. It's in sync. We are doing a warm up. We are doing a cable tricep extension. I'm doing two sets. Two sets here. And then hyper extension. I'm doing that for a warm up. And then I just did the rear delt with dumbbells. So he's going to film me doing all that, but just wanted to introduce what we were doing right now. I just, I did, when I was over on the turf or whatever, I did do some like splits and stretched my groin a little bit. So like I would say, I'm always doing that every time I come to the gym. And I actually noticed that, I think people actually get injured in the gym because they actually lack mobility and flexibility. And to a certain extent, you do have to be flexible and you do have to be mobile to continue to actually sustain and build that muscle mass. So if you are somebody that thinks that stretching is like, you know, like you don't have time for stretching, well, then you better have time to be injured because you're, uh, what? Oh, forgot that everything is misplaced all the time. Say the gym that we train at, um, I'm pulling just walking soon. Say the gym that we train at, the machines are constantly changed everywhere. So I never know where things are. Oh, well. But yeah, so anyways, please start stretching if you're not. Because when you're injured, it's kind of like one of those things where when you're sick, you're like, damn, like if I wouldn't have like done blah, I wouldn't be sick right now. And it's the same perspective of when you get injured, you know, it's like you don't value your body being at its most optimal point until, you're, until it's not, you know. All right, here we have the Z press as like the first, I would say like main movement. Sorry, I have an itch. Okay, so with this movement, it's seated. You can either do barbell or dumbbell. I chose to do dumbbell just because I could have done it on the barbell. It's just, it's the motion for me of like throwing it forward. So with this movement, the biggest thing that I would say is you need to brace your core and you're gonna be forced to anyways because when you sit down and you kind of like lean back, you are forced to activate your core and also press at the same time. So just make sure that when you're doing this movement, you're thinking about, okay, this is delts, you need to focus on that. And then also when you're you're squeezing your core, you know, you need to learn how to brace your core so that you can actually utilize the air that you're actually containing in to execute, you know, when you're pressing up. You know, that's that's your momentum into, into that rep. Okay, so next here we have the uh, dumbbell sumo squat. I actually was going to do an RDL, but my back is still very fried from the workout I did two days ago. So we changed it and I did a pretty much an elevated sumo squat. Most gyms have these, I would say like, you know, platform things. Some of them don't. The biggest thing here is you're sitting back in your heels and hopefully, because I don't know this for sure, I hope that you can see, you know, the glute activation that I'm utilizing while even wearing sweatpants. The key with this is, is I'm still sitting back in my heels and I'm actually controlling it all the way down. You actually see, I kind of come to like a, like a quick pause here. And when I come back up, I'm not just coming up. I'm actually kind of like doing this thing in my mind where I'm like, okay, I'm going to round my glutes and squeeze right underneath my butt cheeks. And that's actually what causes my glutes to shake. Here we have the underhand pull down, and this is actually super studded with a machine kickback. So here, this boss, I'm not really a fan of this bar. Uh, it's hurting my forearms like a mother right now, and I just... One of those workouts where I just hold to throw hands. Anyways, we actually, I would say Lucas and I used to prioritize a lot of the underhand pull downs when we were at po the Powerhouse in Michigan. And when I'm doing this movement, I'm actually trying to target my lower lats. I think that my back as a whole has, has, has grown and developed over time, which I'm, you know, grateful for with the work that we put in. But also I would say, I think I actually, I actually lack lower lats. So I would say when I'm doing this movement, I'm pulling it down and I'm really thinking about feeling it in that really like low spot in my back. So I can try to have, you know, a more well-rounded, I would say overall posterior chain. Okay. This is the machine blue kit back. He's not my favorite machine but it's still doable. I just, I would say I don't have all the effort or I'd say energy right now to do a cable. That's a lot of, it's a lot of patience even getting it on my foot and remembering how to do it. Even though I've been doing it like that for like five years, I still like forget how to do it with like the cable attachment. And that's a whole other thing. So I don't have that kind of patience today, but here we're going to do this. Uh, so with this movement, this actually like lower. So I, I, I put it on like the, the lower one where it's like, it's not directly like squeezing my chest, but like it, it, it gives me enough pressure to kind of lean on it. You'll notice that when I'm doing this movement, I'm actually like still sitting back on my heel. So instead of me like just being compressed against the pad, I'm actually still sitting really far back and I'm trying to really activate, you know, feeling it in my glute. I know I have pants on. I just, I don't really feel like taking my, my shoes off right now, but maybe I will after this set. But you're just gonna notice that again, I'm, I'm still squeezing. You're gonna see my glute activate and I'm not coming all the way down. 
I'm still, I would say, maintaining the tension. So notice I never actually completely stop. I kind of stop enough and then go right back into it. So when I did my last set, I told Lucas, um, <laughs> I said, it's because of the sea fall. I said, I feel like I'm getting off of a ride of a roller coaster, but I, they really, I'm, I'm, I'm just getting off of a nightmare. <laughs> kind of funny, kind of true because it's like so, almost 5 a.m. Kind of, I'm not even sure what goes on anymore. If you're gonna comment, please go to bed. Please just, just don't and, and uh, like unsubscribe. You know, I need support and I don't need to uh, see any more comments about my fucking nose. All right? Like, I'm just, I'm just saying it. I'm going to now explain how to do head thrust. You'll notice that my feet actually are placed. They're a little bit more, you know, it's a closer to me rather than kind of doing it in the similar position that I normally do. This, I'm gonna focus on doing it more like in a close stance. I still feel it in my glutes, obviously, with, with doing it like this. It's just, instead of more so focusing on the outer glute, I'm kind of focusing on more the, the, like the cuppage, I would say, part of my glutes, if that makes sense. This is the most well-rounded regimen I've had with glutes. I don't know if it gets better than this or if it gets worse, but like, I'm doing a lot of glute stuff. And I hope that pains off, right? Yeah. Oh. Oh. All right, last thing here in this superset, I have the machine neutral row. This is actually a new machine that was just added, what, like this week, I think. And again, I like this machine. And I like that every time I come to the gym, I am here for a surprise. Anyways, moving forward. When I'm doing this movement, you're gonna notice that when I'm reaching for the attachments here, like the, the handles, I'm leaning it slightly forward, but I'm not leaning slightly, or I'd say I'm not leaning forward enough where my chest is down. I'm still keeping my posture. Again, my feet are flat against the pad. And when I'm rolling back, I'm, again, really trying to focus on sealing that in my lower lats. So you'll notice that, hopefully you'll see that when I'm pulling it back, I'm really, really, really trying hard to think about that lower lat because I want to have a jacked back. <laughs> again, you know, if I'm doing a machine and you don't have this exact one, it's, it's completely fine. It's actually just, you know, it's just a light press, really. So I have my feet a little bit closer. I have actually done this movement very wide and I, I, I don't mind both, but this time, I would say today, I'm, I'm focusing a little bit more on the quad loaded portion of this movement. So you'll notice that I'm, I'm going very slow and I'm actually really much so controlling it. Like I say, my knees go to my chest and I'm, and I'm really focusing on, I'm feeling the movement like right by my knee there. And again, I'm controlling it the entire set. And I'm also making sure that my hips stay down. I'm making sure I'm, I'm actually holding onto the handles next to me. And I'm, I'm still breathing. You know, I'm not holding my breath the entire time. And I am, I am bracing my core so that this, you know, exercise can actually be done efficiently. All right, last thing here, we have the side raise. I'm doing it with plates just because this is honestly easier for me right now. You'll notice that when I'm doing this movement, I prefer to actually lean a little bit more forward. I do this because I find that my traps are a little bit more dominant and take over with a lot of my upper body movements. And I find this correction that I had, I was told this probably two years ago now, that leaning forward and kind of like pulling my lats down and really trying to raise my arms with my delt rather than just raising my arms. Uh, that was like honestly the best feedback that I could get with this side raise. Again, I'm raising the plates and I'm controlling it on the way up and on the way down. I am really trying to focus on raising my arms up without actually activating my traps. <sighs> All right, and this is now the end of this workout, thank God. And this YouTube video was kind of changed at random parts of the night. Anyways, we still got to the gym and we still, we still completed the day and I would say Alex Formosi, he tweeted and said, exhaustion is a reward for your effort. And when I get in bed today, so this morning, I'm gonna really feel that.